My name's Stuart. Um, I'm an active member at Abergast. I played a lot for like six months. Um, this is a weapons introduction for safety. What you always want to do when you come into play is check your weapons for like cuts and breaks in the uh, latex. All my weapons are in good condition. Um, make sure the core is not exposed because we use weapons with cores. Um, the core tearing in play could cut somebody or like rich skin and that's not good. Um, so like for long swords, you know, take the whole blade, make sure there aren't any like bends in it. It doesn't like it's got a strong core. It doesn't bend too much. It needs to be flexible but not, you know, wiggly. Um, and then with half weapons, we always gotta check the half. Make sure there aren't any tears in it, just for um, really aesthetics, because I mean, you don't really hit people with a half of a weapon. Um, axes should be flexible, but you know, strong enough to you know, hook and be useful. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the safety rules. Um, Alright, what's next? Um, for unarmed combat, really what it boils down to is don't bite anybody, don't scratch. Don't punch or kick, but grappling and tackling are A-OK. -okay. Um, really what it boils down to is if somebody feels unsafe, they'll call a game stop. And um, everybody will stop, take a knee, look down, make sure that, you know, any in-place stuff is happening, they don't know what's going on. And um, so it, safety is really a, a big concern of Abagas because a lot of, like, full contact LARPs you hear about is all combat, like Daggy here. I believe is all combat, right? Yeah. Um, for us, it's not all combat. There's a lot of role playing involved. So when you hear about us being full contact, it's not just you know we're going into a field and beating the hell out of each other. You know, there's a lot of role playing involved. And combat's kind of like a last resort type of thing. So when it boils down to it, try not to bite anybody. Actually, don't bite anybody. Don't scratch. Don't punch. Don't kick. But you know, full tackles are okay. If you're in heavy kit like I wear, you know, I try not to tackle people because, you know, in my full kit, I could break ribs just by armor. Um, that's basically it. Um, oh, and it's okay to grab someone on yeah, the body yeah. as long as it's not inappropriate, and if they say stop, stop. Yeah, yeah, you can grab and, like, like hair, everything's okay. Just don't go for, like, eyeballs because that's entirely unsafe. You know, genitalia regions are... Um, okay but they're legal targets they're legal but, but we prefer not to get hit in them basically I, I mean i'd much rather prefer not to get hit in the you know the dicular region weapon types and everything so swords and daggers and like spears kind of bladed weapons which um you know won't cut through stuff like chain mail or brigandine which is uh This kind of armor. This is brigandine or coated plates. It's basically leather with uh, plates in between and then more leather um, tacked together. So, bladed weapons won't go through that. Um, the next kind of weapon is a blunt weapon, which is like an axe or a hammer. Um, that can bludgeon through, you know, chain mail. But if you have plate, which is like this, which is a bracer. Um, blades and blunt weapons don't go through this, but an arrow will knock through any armor. Um, coifs, which is like a chainmail headpiece, blocks uh, one blade, but no blunt weapons. So if you get hit with this on in the head, it'll stop. You know, you can hit one time with a blade, but if somebody hits you with an axe or a hammer, you're done, you're unconscious. Alright, um, leather is one extra point, so this is like a demi gauntlet. For hand coverage so for me like I like having this because if I get hit in the hand I don't have to you know I don't have to drop my weapon or anything like it, that it blocks one hit from any weapon I think per yeah combat. it'll block any any kind of weapon uh, one time for every combat so like if you get hit once with like an axe in the hand with this on it'll block that one time for that combat but pretty much after that it's shot so you, you don't get to use that armor point again um, plate helms which is this kind of thing. Uh, blocks all bladed weapons, 
and uh, but only one extra hit against blunt weapons. So basically, like you get wailed on in the head with a plate helm on, you know, with a sword all day. But if you get hit in the head with a like an axe or a hammer, you know, you have one extra shot, but the second one will unconscious you. Uh, and then shield. This is um, this is my big shield. Uh, it's 36 inches round. Basically, shields and Abigos block everything except for magic weapons, which are extremely rare and you probably won't ever see one. Uh, but what a magic weapon does, is it'll cut through any weapon. So you get, if you parry a magic weapon with your weapon, you have to drop yours and take a hit to the arm. It can cut through shields, it can cut through armor. So basically, if you see somebody with a magic weapon, avoid combat with that person pretty much entirely because you're going to get messed up. It's going to be bad. That hit's going to get you no matter what you're wearing. Yeah, I mean, you could be in full full gear, and you get hit one time with the magic weapon, and, you know, you have to take that hit as if you had no armor on at all. Oh, and I guess, talk about, because we shield that, it's suggested for, if you want to be comfortable, have some padding on the back of the Oh, shield. yeah. Um, with shield bashing, we, we allow shield bashing, so I can, you know, I can hit you with the shield, that kind of thing. I could... You know, get you with a hook with the shield to knock away weapons or knock you down to the ground. But with that kind of thing, we suggest you have padding on the inside of the shield. I don't. It doesn't matter to me that much. Um, just for your own safety and your own comfort. And um, for your own safety, don't have things protruding out towards yourself. But that's just kind of dumb. <laughs> uh, try and, we now allow latex shields. Oh yeah, and we allow latex shields which are lighter and Usually it'll look a lot better than this kind of thing because this, I mean, this is real thick and real kind of almost cumbersome. I mean, not to me, but um, with the latex shield, it looks more realistic, basically. It's kind of shiny, but it doesn't, you know, there's no canvas on it, so it doesn't look, you know, like fake, I guess. Is there anything else you can think of? Not really. I mean, try not to headbutt people pretty much it oh wait uh, if you have chainmail on underneath a coat of plates it counts as a plate it counts as a plate piece so basically you're immune to blunt and bladed weapons so thank you Stewie for helping me and he's probably the best person to have do this with me since he was on plot for quite a while and he knows all of the weapon rules and if you come to an event and you see him and you have a question he probably wouldn't mind answering it. I will not. If you need a, if you need an answer to any question, basically you can ask me, or you know because plot team gets or me, real or busy. Joe. Oh yeah, or, or Steph. Or, but plot team gets real busy when um imp when game on's about to start. So yeah, you some, find sometimes a plot member or two will vanish, and that's because they're talking about secret stuff. Yeah, but basically if you need a, if you need a, uh, a question answered, just find somebody who looks like they've been there for a while. So look for me. Look for Stephanie. Um, Pretty much anybody who's got really, really nice garb or kit on is uh, probably a, an older character. They're, they're the people to ask if you have a question. Thank you. Problem. Very helpful. Really fun. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Putting a fucking helm on for that shit.